My name is Eric Rumstrup. I'm an associate professor of chemistry and material science at Montana State University, and I'm a 2017 Beckman Young investigator. Dr. Arnold O. Beckman was singular in his contribution to the scientific, business, philanthropic, and technological endeavor of the U.S. and ultimately of the world. The instrumentation and techniques he developed made not only an immediate impact scientifically, but have had an enormous positive legacy in everything from the semiconductor industry to healthcare. To me, one of the most transformative innovations of Dr. Beckman was the DU spectrophotometer which provided the first broadly usable and reliable method for measuring UV absorption spectra. The key question that the DU spectrophotometer allowed scientists to ask was not, does a sample absorb UV light, but rather, how much UV light does a sample absorb and at what specific wavelengths? That seemingly simple refinement led to a revolution in how chemical samples were analyzed and characterized, speeding up research by a factor of 10,000 in some cases, and ultimately advancing scientific discovery ever since. This idea that by developing more sensitive, more advanced tools, we are able to ask more precise and clever questions which reveal something fundamental and ultimately useful about the chemical universe, that idea is an inspiration to me in my own research. In my lab, my group works to develop new tools for understanding how nanostructures pieces of matter that are more than a hundred times smaller than the diameter of hair on your head can be used in combination with sunlight to produce electricity, convert low value abundant chemicals into fuel, and reduce contaminants in natural water systems. For the Beckman Young Investigator Program, we developed a number of tools that allow us to ask what seems like a simple question. What happens when matter interacts with light? Why do we care about that question? One answer is that when a chunk of matter absorbs light, its electrons acquire greater kinetic energy. The electrons start wiggling around a little faster than they were before light was absorbed. We say that the electrons have been excited. And what that means is that they can store the energy from the light, at least for a short time. Now, it turns out that we can use this stored energy for useful things, like in solar cells, where the energy of the sun is used to produce electricity, or in types of materials called photocatalysts, where we can use sunlight to drive chemical reactions that would otherwise not occur. So to study this trick, this transformation of sunlight into other forms of energy, useful in modern technologies, it becomes necessary to study how the electrons themselves evolve, how long they stay excited, how fast they move from point A to point B, and how the energy they store gets transformed. To do so requires sophisticated tools that not only have the time resolution to watch as the electrons evolve, but also the spatial resolution to understand how the size, shape, and composition of nanomaterials affects them. So one way to do this is by measuring the spectrum or the color of a material in much the same way as Dr. Beckman did 80 years ago with his introduction of the DU spectrophotometer. We developed a broadband transient absorption microscope. And all that means is that we measure the change in color quantitatively after we have excited the electrons in a nanoscale object using light. In this way, we can watch as the electrons evolve in space and time. After exciting a few of the electrons in a material, even if you could see these tiny nanoscale objects without a microscope, the color changes wouldn't be visible with the naked eye. In fact, the color change can be so small that only one photon, one quanta of energy that comprises light out of a million is different. And so we have to have remarkable sensitivity in these instruments. Furthermore, the excited electrons sometimes store their excess energy for only a trillionth of a second, a picosecond. So to study them, we can't use regular light produced by a light bulb. Instead, we have to use lasers that produce pulses that are 30 quadrillionths of a second long. A second instrument we developed as part of this project is an excited state Raman microscope. Here, the core idea is the same. We want to watch as electrons evolve in space and time in nanoscale objects. 
The difference is that in this instrument, we use three of these incredibly short laser pulses to study not the color change in nanostructures as we did before, but rather how the vibrations between atoms change after we've excited their electrons. While these tools can be complicated, in the end, the instruments provide us with the opportunity to watch the beautiful and informative dance of electrons in nanoscale materials at their characteristic time and length scales. Our hope is that one day this powerful and unprecedented way of viewing the nanoscale world will lead to new technologies that improve the human condition in much the same way that the legacy of Dr. Beckman's innovations continues to benefit us all today.